Good afternoon, folks. I thought I'd put it together a video to show you how to set up and access the GitHub repository for AIMA Python. Okay. So first off, we're going to create a directory to store our files. Now I'm using Windows. You're using Linux, presumably, if you're using the VM. Um, so there's slight variation in the syntax commands. But all I'm basically doing is changing my directory to where I store my work in Workspace. I'm going to make a directory called Audio Presentation Test. And then I'll change it to that directory. So you can see it's empty. <clears throat> so now I have to go to the actual GitHub repository itself. And I want to get the URL for cloning it. Now, so you click on the green button there, copy the link. I already have Git installed on my command line. I assume it's already installed on your VMs as well. So I just specify the command git clone, name of the repository, and return. And it's going to start copying that. It should only take a few minutes, if even. So I think it's about six, seven megabytes max. Okay, that's done. And now we can say it's created the AIM, AIMA Python folder, so we can change into that. And we have a list of our files installed. Very nice. So now, I believe you're using the Spider IDE. So that comes as part of the Anaconda distribution. So I'm going to open up Anaconda Navigator and then just launch Spider from that. And then we'll just have a quick look at some of the code within one of the files as part of that repository, agents.py. And we'll have a look at the random vacuum agent and the environment for running it. So we find Spider and we launch it. And we wait for that to load. And OK. Here is one we have. So. So here we have our ID. Okay. So our actual file typed in there, our interpreter for Python down here, and we can see where we're based. So, currently this directory I'm in. We want to change that, but we can do it by opening a file and trying to run that. So again, we saved our files to KR test, AIMA Python, and we're going to open up agents.py. And that's a nice big file with over a thousand lines of code. But it gives a lot of examples of implementing agents and environments from the first two chapters of the book. So what we're going to look at is the random vacuum agent, which is at line 182. So find random vacuum agent. And we choose one of the actions from the vacuum environment. So if you remember our vacuum environment, we have the hoover moving from one tile to the other and carrying out an action in each tile. So uh, overview on how to run the actual agent. So what does it return? It returns an agent, which is a separate class to the defined up above, with a random agent program, which takes in a list of four operations, the right, left, suck, and no operation. Okay. So if we have a look at the environment in which it'll be running, 
I suppose we can talk about it here first. So they give you kind of a bit of helper code in terms of how to get it running. So you define the agent equal to an instance of random vacuum agent, which will return. Again, it's a very simple agent, not much to it. The environment in which it will run is the trivial vacuum environment. So we have to define that. Then we have to add the agent to this environment. And then we have to run that agent. And we can check the status to see that both tiles are clean. OK? So if we have a quick look at the trivial, trivial vacuum environment on line 735, which is this guy. So class environment. The environment has two locations, A and B. Each can be dirty or clean. The agent perceives its location and the location's status. This serves as an example of how to implement a simple environment. So we have constructor invoking a call to super. We're setting our status or location A and location B as a random choice between clean and dirty. So each time we create an instance of the trivial vacuum environment, the state of the world will be randomly assigned for the two tiles, A and B, to either be clean or dirty. We have a number of functions. So define things classes, define percept, define execute action, define default location. So again, I won't go through all of these. But the percept is the agent location and location, and location status. So it returns agent location, self that status based on agent location. OK, execute action. Here's the logic for actually carrying out what we want to do. So it changes agent location and our location status, track performance, score 10 for each dark cleaned, minus 1 for each move. So if our action is equal to right, then change the location to location B. Why is that the case? If we're in A and we say right, we're moving to B. If we're in B and we say right, we still say B. And we decrement the performance by one, record that. Action is left. The location has to be A, again, because if we're in A, we move left, we're still in A. If we're in B and we move left, we're in A. Decrement again. If our action is suck, then if that is on the current location is equal to dirty, we increment the performance. Irrespective of whether or not this is true, we update the status to clean. <coughs> Because that's the only other option that could happen there, you know. And to find default, okay, to find, to find default location. Again, we're just picking the location we start at random, so that's whenever we set up the environment, that will happen. Okay.